Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and get started into our lesson. I'm going to share my screen here. Let me know if you guys can see my screen. Got it. Let's see it. Yep. All right. All right. How about now? Can y'all see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. The gavel. Yes. yes, we can see it. Hallelujah. 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 How many understand what the law is? How many understand how, how important the law is to the most high? This morning, we're going to tap in. If you don't know, we're going to tap in and we're going to look at what the law really represents. Hallelujah. All right. Law abiding citizen. How many of y'all is a law abiding citizen? Yes, sir. All right. Well, let's dive into what this is. Um, during our time in our Christian experiences and our various backgrounds, we have been taught many different things concerning the law. Uh, some of us have been taught that the law was bondage. Some of us have been taught that Yahshua knelt the law to the stake. Some of us even been taught that the law was the Old Testament only. But we must understand that the law is not just the first five books of the Bible, but it's the foundation of the Bible. Psalms 11 verse three says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The law is the foundation of the scriptures. Everything, everything hinges on the law of Yah. Hallelujah. Without a working understanding and the proper knowledge of the law, our understanding will be flawed of the word. So let's dive in of what the law is. So we understand if you, if you have a shirt and you're buttoning your shirt up, and you start it out wrong, it's gonna mess up the whole button of your whole shirt. So you have to start all over and start from the top button and go down because if that top button is off and you're, you know, you put it in the wrong hole, it's gonna mess up the foundation of everything. Hallelujah. So therefore it's very important to have a foundation of the law. There are five main divisions within the Old Testament law. Following is a categorization. Please note that occasionally the civil and moral laws, they do overlap. The main differences between the civil, the ceremonial, sacrificial, the dietary, and moral aspects of the law of Moses has revealed in the Pentateuch. How many know what the Pentateuch stands for? How many know, how many know what, what pen means in Greek? All right. Five. Five. Who said five? Me, your mother. Hallelujah. Go ahead, mama. Hallelujah. <laughs> five. So you have, in the Greek, they call it the Pentateuch. It's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy are in their purpose. Hallelujah. The civil law deals mainly with relationships between individuals, the settling of disputes, and the description of proper behavior. That's the civil law, because there's five categories of the law. So the second one is the sacrificial laws. The laws deals with the priesthood initiation and the priestly procedures as they related to the various sacrifices through which the people of the Old Testament were cleansed of their sins. Number three, the moral law is based on the character of Yah and extends from the Old into the New Testament. Therefore, as it was wrong to lie in the Old Testament, it's still wrong to lie in the New Testament. The fourth, the fourth component of the laws is the ceremonial laws. And these ceremonial laws, they would deal with the festivals, the, the, the Shabbats, and the new moons. Number five, the dietary laws 
this with the absence of unclean foods and the clean foods that tell us what to eat. Most of us don't like that, the dietary laws, because we like to eat what we want to eat. Hallelujah. But the moral, <laughs> the moral law, it has no explanation because it is based upon Yah's character. So therefore, there's no expiration date, even though we're not under the governing law of Israel, but under the moral, sometimes it's called the royal law, there's no expiration. It's based on the character of Yah. Some of the scriptures that we find based upon the moral law is Leviticus 19 and 2. You shall be holy for I, Yahuwah, your Yah, am holy. That's not under no expiration date. We still should walk in holiness. We still should be codex, which is set apart because Yah is holy. So if Yah is holy, guess what? He's requiring for us who follow him to be holy. Hallelujah. So understand Leviticus 26, it tells us about idolatry. Y'all said, I am a jealous Yah. I'm a jealous Yah. You should have no other Elohim before me. These things are still in play. There's no expiration date on the moral component of the law. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, that's your love, Yah. That's dealing with the Shema. The Lord, thy Yah, is one Yah. That's the Shema, hear and obey. Leviticus 19 and 18, love your neighbor as yourself. Somebody, somebody do this. Um, Yahusha, as he was teaching in the Brit Hadasha or in the New Testament, he quoted the Ten Commandments. And a lot of us believe that, uh, that when he quoted, when the Pharisees came to him and they asked Yahusha, what is the greatest commandments? And he quoted to them. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. But he also said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What was Yahusha quoting? What was he quoting, quoting to us? Because a lot, of, a lot of us believe that we don't have to follow uh, the Ten Commandments. We can only follow the two. We just need the two. Love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord thy Yahweh with all your heart, soul, and mind. Is that true? Do we follow two laws in the commandments? Is that it? Somebody talk to me. Nate, do we follow two laws? What was he saying to the disciples? When he said those two commandments, did he just mean just two? No, because he, uh, if he's saying love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, if you love God, then you'll be obedient to his commandments, and therefore everything else will fall in place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what was Yahushua doing? Yahushua was summarizing the Ten Commandments. The first five of the commandments is based upon loving Yah. That should have no other God before me. Uh, and that shall not that shall not make any graven image. That shall keep the Sabbath and keep it holy. He was summarizing. He was summarizing the first five into that. And the second one, love thy neighbor as thyself, according to Leviticus 9, 18. He was summarizing the second part. That shall not covet your neighbor's wife. All these things were summarizing the law. He wasn't just, just two commandments saying, oh, you just have to do those two things. But he was speaking and summarizing. Hallelujah. So understand Leviticus 19 and 13. That should not uh, uh, oppress your neighbor. Leviticus 19 and 11, still in the lion. All these things are still in effect because this speaks to the moral character of the Most High. Now we get to the civil, civil laws. The civil laws deals with disputes between individuals. And a lot of these uh, laws here that we see here, they expire with the demise of the Hebrew civil government. So these laws, all these laws where we are right now, we're not under the jurisdiction uh, of the Hebrew government. We're in America now. We're here. We're America. So we understand that we follow the laws that the government has given us. So certain things that's in here uh, does not apply no more because we're not in Israel. Hallelujah. Do we understand that? So just a couple of these scriptures here that we can look over. Uh, Leviticus 19, be just with the poor. Uh, Deuteronomy 22, 1 and 4. Uh, we definitely probably need to put Deuteronomy 21, 18 and 21 back in place. <laughs> Dealing with rebellious children. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a different way that we have to uh, deal in America where they dealt with their children under the law. Divorce and dress attire. Uh, don't hate in your heart. These different things has expired with the demise of the Hebrew civil government. 
property redemption. These are the, some more of these laws that deal with the civil law that we no longer are actually under. Property redemption, Leviticus 25, murder and killing, Deuteronomy 21, 1 through 4, retain just scales. These were all the commandments or all the laws that Israel had to abide by. Yah showed us in his word how to deal with him, but also how to eat and also how to deal with each other. Hallelujah. Now, the sacrificial laws. So are we still making sacrifices now? Negative. Who said no. negative? Terrence. Terrence, why, why are we not dealing with the sacrificial laws now? Because the greatest sacrifice has already been made. The only one that was necessary. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody get me Hebrews 10. Starting at verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever, forever them that are sanctified. Continue whereof, to whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he has said before, This is the gov this is a covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities I rem remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, you brother, can start, you can start right there. So, being that that Yahusha, the Passover Lamb, he came down. So, therefore, he was the atonement for sin. So, therefore, we don't have to get any bullocks and goats and sheep because he done the work for us at the stake. So no longer do we have to get these things. He fulfilled it for us. He walked it out. He is the fulfillment of the Passover lamb. Hallelujah. We understand that. Hallelujah. So therefore, we don't have to slay the lamb no more. We grew up in a Christian church. One of my favorite songs as a child said, you don't have to slay the lamb anymore. Somebody has taken the place of the lamb. And his name is Yahusha Hamashiach, the great I am. So we thank Yah for his sacrifices. So this doesn't apply to us no more. We don't have to get for our sins and start finding bullocks and going out here and, and getting things and slaughtering things for our sins. But he has been the sacrificial lamb for us. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So ceremonial. As ceremonial laws, are they still in effect? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They're still in effect, Shalane. Why yes. are they still in effect? Um, because we still do, uh, um, uh, because we still do the seven feasts and we still do Sabbath. Well, get get, get Leviticus twenty three for me, Shalane. Okay. Say Le Leviticus twenty three. Yes. Okay. Uh, which verse? Start at number. Start the number two and read two six. Okay. Um, <clears throat> speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feast of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. These are my feasts. Hold up, hold up, Shalane. They shall be what? They shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Holy convocations. That word convocation is a word mikra, which means it's a practice or rehearsal for a public event. Convocation, assembly coming together. So therefore... He said that these things, should they be just do it one time and that's it? Or do we do these things forever? Keep on reading, Shalane. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work on it. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times mm. on the 14th. What the 14th. At their what? Uh, appointed times. What is that word appointed times in the Hebrew? Moed. Moed. These are appointed times. So therefore, is it 
Done, is that done away with? Is it done away with? Is it a point that this is one time that's it? We don't have to do it no more? Come on. Let's go to Colossians. Somebody goes to Colossians 2, verse 16. Matter of fact, start at Colossians 2, start at 14, please. Chapter 2, verse 14. Lotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay, wait there, Ma, wait there. What is, does that mean that, that y'all took the laws and he went to the cross with him and, and he blotted it out? Does that mean that the law is done away with? No. It doesn't mean that the law, what was the ordinance? The ordinance was the death decrees. When we were in, in sin, we was walking in sin. We was transgress, transgressing the law of Yah. So therefore, we was walking in sin. But there were death decrees on us. Anytime we committed sin, there were death decrees that we were actually responsible for if we sinned against the law. So therefore, what he did with, at the work at the cross or at the stake was his blood that was shed. It covered the death decrees of the law that was against us. So no longer when we commit sin that we die. Because his blood, we have grace and repentance now. Go ahead and keep reading. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphant over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All right, stop right there. So Paul is talking to the Hellenized Gentiles that was in a foreign land. And he was telling them that let no man judge you. Don't let no man judge you for, for meat, no drink. So therefore, if they was in a paganistic environment and everybody else was around them being pagan and Paul was preaching to them and now he was, they was understanding the law and coming out of their pagan ways because the pagans, they wasn't keeping no laws, statutes and commandments. They were worshiping pagan gods. They was in idolatry. But when Paul came to them and he was teaching them the law, statutes and commandments of y'all, yeah, he was saying like, now that you understand the truth, don't let no man judge you for that. Don't let no man judge you for walking out. And don't let no man, Pookie and Ray Ray and all these different people telling you that you ain't got to keep the law no more. Don't let no one judge you. So we keep, we continue to keep these things. This is a memorial. This is a festival that we commemorate every year, his appointed times. So that's, that's not done away with. Festivals, Sabbaths, Exodus 20, 8, 11. We keep the Shabbat weekly because these things are a continual thing. It's Olam. There's a word in the Hebrew forever it means Olam. He said these things are forever. Ever. Who changed it? Who told us not to do it? Who told us not to keep the Shabbat no more? Who told us? The apostles, they kept the feast. Yahusha kept the feast. He kept the Sabbath. And we're going to get more into that in weeks to come. But if they kept the feast and the, and the Sabbath, who told us not to do it? It's all like tradition of men to me. But let's move on. We're going to get deeper into it. How many know what the Hebrew word is for uh for law? What do we call the for the law? Torah. The Torah, the Greek word in Greek for the law is nomos. 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 The English word for the law, law is law. In the simplest form, Torah means instructions. How many know we all need instructions? The law is not something that's, that's bad and something that's terrible, but we need instructions. When Yah gave the, the commandments to, to Moses, he showed the people how to worship him. He said, you don't worship me as the heathens worship me. All the other nations around Israel, they was in pagan worship. They was worshiping all type of different things. But he said, listen, you don't have to worry about worshiping me like them because I'm going to show you how. 
I'm going to show you how to worship me. That word nomo is the Greek word for law. Nomophobia is the fear or the disdain for laws. Nomophobia or fear of the law is what the enemy has cultivated in Christians through the writings of Paul. Christian church had told us that we don't have to keep the laws. We call them nomophobic. So when you hear me say nomophobic, that's you have an understanding of what that means, that we are afraid of keeping the laws of Yah. Romans 7 and 12 says, Paul says, saying that he knows only by the law and that the law is good and holy. So if Paul wasn't keeping the law, why is he saying that the law is good and that the law is holy if the law is done away with? Come on, let's dig. The Greek word nomos, which means law, becomes, you see, becomes lawless. So when you put the letter A in front of any Greek word, it becomes without. So any Greek word, when you put the number, the letter A before e, any Greek word, it takes away. It takes away from the word. So if nomos is law, when you put an A, which is anomia, it means lawlessness. So anomia means to be lawless in the understanding of Christianity. Most of, the, most of us was taught that iniquity meant grievous sin, but in retrospect, it means lawless which makes Matthew 7, 21 and 23 a serious reality. How many uh, was taught in church that that lawless or, or the law uh, or, or iniquity meant sin? How many was taught that? I was taught that. I was. I was taught that. We looked at iniquity. Hey, what's that was taught that? Someone say you were iniquity at me? Oh, man. If someone said, man, you're full of iniquity, that was a, those were fighting words. Because <laughs> I said that, that you're full of sin. But let's dig deeper. Let's dig deeper. Now, we look at the scripture here. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That, that's that word right there. And know me, iniquity, which means those who work lawless. So you have, you're going to have in that day, you're going to have pastors that say, hey, I laid hands in your name. We are in the verses in your name. I see people walk out the wheelchair in your name. Y'all who's just going to look at them and say, you depart from me, ye that work iniquity, ye that work lawlessness. Lawlessness. So therefore, if you without law, then how can you be justified in the eyesight of, of Yah? Well, you're not keeping no law. Come on, let's dig. Let's dig. So we established that nobody is Strong's 458, which is the other disregard for Yah's law. If you look up that word, anomia, in Strong's 458, it's the utter disregard for Yah's law, which is a negative influence on man's soul. We must not understand what is sin, the biblical definition for sin. The biblical definition for sin is whosoever committed sin transgress also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. You ask people right now in church, what is sin? They're going to tell you all type of things. They're going to say this. They're going to say fornication. They're going to say lying. They're going to say stealing. But the biblical definition is when you transgress the law of Yah. That's the definition of sin. So sin is the direct rebellion to the law of Yah. I ask the question, is adultery, is lying, stealing, is that sin? Is those things really sin? But we must understand these are symptoms of the main problem, which is rebellion to the law or the Torah of Yah. Coughing, sneezing, vomiting are only mere symptoms of the real problem, which is the virus that causes the symptoms. So understand this, the real problem of sin is not that the fact that you, you are a fornication or you're an adultery or you lie. Those are symptoms. But the real problem of sin is the rebellion. The rebellion to what? The rebellion to the law of Yah. So every, everything outside of these are symptoms. If you have a virus and you're coughing, <coughs> you're sneezing, 
uh, you have a uh, fever. These things are symptoms. But the real issue to get rid of those symptoms, you had to come for the virus. So therefore, the, the, the symptom or the real issue of these symptoms is the rebellion of the law of Yah. Hallelujah. Let's work. The word sin in Hebrew is kata, according to Strong's number two, four, and three. And literally, it means miss the mark or failure to fulfill the goal. What is the mark that we're missing? The mark you miss is the law, Torah, which is the primitive root meaning. Now, if we go to the ancient Paleopithecus Hebrew, we find the words ket, tet, and ala to make up the word kata. Ket, it means wall, outside, divide, half. Tet equals basket, surround, contain, hold, mud. The aleph, it means ox head, strength, power, and leader. So if we know anything about the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, there is a revelation in these letters. So the revelation of the word kata through the ancient Paleo-Hebrew the revelation is outside that which contains strength and power. So when you sin and you transgress the law, you are outside of which contains strength, power, which is in the law. So you are practicing, you're outside of these things. The law gives us strength and it gives us power. So when you transgress the law of God, you are outside of these things. Hallelujah. The Hebrew word Torah is derived from a root word that was used in the realm of archery. That word is yara. Yara means to shoot an arrow in order to hit a mark. That mark or target, of course, was the object at which the archer was aiming for. Thus, the mark is Yah's word or his law. To disobey or to deliberately miss the mark is rebellion or sin. Hallelujah. To sin is deliberately rebel against the known will of Yah. His known will is Torah. This is why Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Yahusha Hamashiach. That's the press. That's what we're aiming at. When we keep Torah, we have Torah. We're aiming, we're, we're as that archer that's looking at that mark. If we pull back our bow and we hit that bow, we're hitting on the mark. Every day we keep Torah. Every day we walk out Torah. We're pressing and we're hitting that mark. Hallelujah. So if Torah is hitting the mark, then sin is missing the mark. The Greek word for sin is hermatos. That's Strong's number 264. It means to miss the mark. So basically, Ms. Fakat, we understand that the law is the barometer for sin. How do we know what sin is but by the law? Paul declares this in Romans. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Yah forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law had said, thou shalt not covenant. But sin taken occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of conspicuous. For without the law, sin was dead. Hallelujah. For I was alive without the law once. Paul said I was doing my own thing at one time. Without the law, I was doing me. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just. Paul said, I was doing my thing at one time without the law. But when I understand the law, when I looked into the law, it showed me myself and I died. I had to come under uh, the subjection of the law because the law is the barometer. It's the reflection. Once I know the law, I have to walk by it. Hallelujah. So therefore, in our everyday lives, we have to walk in the law. The law is our barometer. It's our stance. Hallelujah. The law of Yah is the knowledge of sin. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there should be no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. 
Now look at the scripture here. I'm going to pick on somebody real quick who I got here. Let me see. Let me go to my list real quick. I need a helper today. Brother Jaime, you still on here? Yes. Help me out. Right. Help me out. So when you look at the scripture, therefore by the deeds of the law should no flesh be justified in his sight. Does that is that first part or that A clause of the scripture? Is that for the law or that is that against the law? All right, let me read that. Just therefore, the first this the A clause up until sight. Okay, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Stop there. Does, does that sound like it's for the law or against the law? Um, it sounds like it's for the law to me. It does? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for the law, definitely. Okay. Nehemiah, what yeah. does that sound like to you? Yeah, First it's, law. It's for the law. Sounds like for the law. Hmm. All right. Brandon. What does it sound like to you? Law it is. Therefore, by the deeds of law, there shall no flesh be justified in sight. It sounds like by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in sight. It's like it's against the law to me. But if you look at the second half, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. This seems like this scripture is, is in contradiction of itself. First part, it says, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there should be no flesh justified in his sight. And that seems like it's against the law. But the second part says, for by the law, it's the knowledge of sin. So a lot of times when we you're talking and you're talking to someone about the law, they will use the scripture. But let's dig deeper. Let's dissect the scripture real quick, if we can. One second. Let me stop share real quick. Let me pull something up here. Y'all get something out of this so far? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Great. Who, who Hallelujah. has a blue letter? Who has a blue letter Bible? I do. Go to that scripture in the blue letter. Yep. Romans 3, 20. Uh, well, let me see here. Yep. I got it. Okay. Go to, read it again in the blue letter. And tell me what the word by means in Greek. Yep. On the uh, first, on the first part or the second part where it says for by the law. The first part, therefore by the deeds of the law. Yep. It's ek. Ek. What does that word mean? Um, it means out of, uh, from, by, away from. Okay. Uh, so it says the word by. So we're looking at therefore by the deeds of the law. So that word by is the word ek. That word ek is a Greek word, and it means outside. So therefore, it looks like there's a mistranslation here. They mistranslated by putting the word by there. It's supposed to be ek. So ek is Greek. Ex is Hebrew, which means um, exodus, which means out. So if you put the word ek in there instead of by, that they mistranslated, it would say, therefore, outside the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So there was a mistranslation here. That's why this scripture is conflicting. Because they're saying, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. It don't make sense. If Paul is saying the law is holy, the law is good, why are you saying by the deeds of the law, there should no flesh be justified in his sight? That don't make sense. But they mistranslate the word by, it's supposed to be ek here. So it says, it's supposed to say, therefore, outside the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Y'all see that? You see the mistranslation here? Y'all see that? How this was mistranslated? It seemed like that Paul was against the law. Come on. Give me another one. Go to Galatians 3 and 10 real quick. You want me to read it? Yes, please. All right. Galatians 3 and 10. 
for as many us are, uh, sorry, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Okay. Go to the word by again in, in, in there. Go to the word by. Okay. Galatians 3 and 10. Mm -hmm. Continue of not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. I don't see a volume there. You don't see a volume there in the, in the blue letter? Okay, let me pull it up. And this is uh, KJV um, that I'm looking up. All right. So I'm going to read it for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone that continue not in the things which are written in the book of the law. That word is mistranslated here is the word uh, of. Of is still if you look at it, anyone have a blue letter Bible, it says of is the word ek, which means out of. So oh, that, yes, of, yep. Yeah, right. so you see it? Yep. So for, for as many, which is, this is what it's supposed to say, for as many are of or outside the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, curse is everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So understand this. The translation into English has been mistranslated in a lot of areas. Do you think that's done on purpose? Why come every time that when it comes to the law, there is a mistranslation that's taking place? The Bible says this, Jeremiah, during my, Jeremiah 8 and 8 says, with a lion pen, the scribes with their lion pen. So therefore, translations in English, that's why we had to go to the, the original. That's why we had to go into the Greek. That's why we had to go to the Hebrew because English language sometimes gives us an injustice or does us an injustice. Hallelujah. So when you say the law has been abolished, you are saying grace has been abolished as well. You're saying there is no more sin, but it's apparent sin is still there. It's still here. We judge sin by the law. Without the law, we would do as we please. If we have no law, we have no sin, which means there is no need for grace. So what are we justified by, y'all? There is a, a doctrinal-based theology in Christianity called sola fide, meaning justification by faith alone. This doctrine was based of the Reformed and Lutheran traditions of, uh, of Protestant, Protestantism, among others from the Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Oriental Orthodox churches. But based off the scriptures, is this doctrine accurate? Is a faith alone accurate? Is a faith alone doctrine accurate? There is something called interpretive methodology where we allow the scriptures to interpret itself. According to the scriptures, we are not justified only by our faith in the Mashiach alone, but we are justified by the law of faith, a law of Yah and faith. Here's some precepts here. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yah, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So are we justified by, by, by grace? Alone? No, we're not justified by grace alone. Oh. Not at all. Come on. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of Yah and the faith in the Mashiach. That's proven we're not justified by faith alone. Come on, let's go down another precept. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of, Ham, of the Yahusha HaMashiach, Revelation 12 and 17. So we're not justified by just faith, but we have to be justified by the law and justified by the faith in the Mashiach. These are the two things that we're going to make it to the kingdom. You just can't say, oh, we oh, we justified by Christ. We ain't got to do nothing but be, believe Christ. No, you got to do, get to do the law. Faith and works are dead. Faith without works is dead. So you have to have both. Hallelujah. We have to walk out the law. We have to keep the law. That is our parameter. 
any any kingdom that you in or any uh government that you in, they all have laws. In America, we have laws here. You just can't do what you want to do. Christianity has taught us that we can just do what we want to do. You can live how you want to live. You can, you can eat what you want to eat. You can do what you want to eat, do. You can do anything you want to. But again, grace is only for those that keep the law. If you don't keep no law, what you need grace for? If you're in the car and you're rolling down the street and the police pull you over and they come to you and say, Mr. Mr. Brandon Abbott, I caught you doing 75 and the 35. And they pull you over and they come here. I got to give you a ticket. When they go back and sit in that car, they look at your records. Then they got what you do. They come back to you and say, listen, Mr. Abbott, I was going to give you a ticket, but I looked at your record. I looked at you. You had no tickets. You have a clean record. So therefore, I'm not going to give you a ticket today. I'm giving you grace because you have continued, kept the law every other time. So how can you say that I don't keep the law, but you say you, I got grace. Grace is for only those who keep the law. Those who are walking out the precepts. Those who are walking in his statutes. Those that are walking in his commandments. Grace is for you. Where there is no law, there's no sin. Where there's no sin, there is no grace. So we have to understand that we have to walk in the law. We can't be like everybody else in the world. They choose not to keep the law. They feel like they are, the law is done away with. Yah forbid. Yahusha kept the law. Paul kept the law. Peter kept the law. They all kept the law. They all kept the law. But after the death of the apostles and after the death uh, of the disciples and those that walked in the statutes and laws and statutes of Yah, then you had the different individuals, the church fathers and these different things that came in that start changing these things. So that's why Yahushua just said in Mark 7, we don't walk at the traditions of men. We don't do that. We follow what Yah say. Malachi 3 and 6 said, I am Yah. I change if not. Hebrew says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Does Yah word change? Is he schizophrenic? Is he bipolar? If he said keep the law, that's what he means. We don't let man tell us that the law is done away with. We don't tell man you know, that man tell us, oh, you ain't got to do this no more. Because if you do that, who are you following? Are you following men? Or are you following Yah? Constantine Changed the fourth commandment. Changed it with an edict in 321 AD. Changed it. Changed the Sabbath to Sunday. So because they changed the Sabbath from from Saturday to Sunday, are we supposed to do Sunday Sabbath because the Roman Catholic Church says so? Or do we follow what y'all say? Do we believe what y'all say? Yes, sir. sir. The problem in, in, in what we're in right now is because we are influenced by man's traditions. Man's traditions got us in trouble. That's what got the Pharisees in trouble. That got them in trouble. Yahoo just said, listen, you do as the Pharisees do. When you listen to what they say, do, but you don't do as they do. Because the Pharisees, they was about their own traditions. He said, he told, Yahushua told the people, said, listen, listen to them. Because they sit in the seat of Moses. They, 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 they quote the law, but don't do as they do. Because they hypocrites. They make their own traditions. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. You have to have the heart of Yah. It's not easy walking in a, a world, or it's not easy walking in a place where everybody is contrary to the law. Everybody's lawless. Everybody's doing what they want to do. This is why Paul was telling the church in Colossians, don't let no one judge you now that you understand the truth by keeping the feast days, because it's not a common thing to do this. But the Bible says, broad is the way, hallelujah, that leads to destruction. We got to get on a straight and narrow pathway. That leads to eternal life, and very few shall find it. We have to understand that we've been called out. We've been called out. We've been called out for a time such as this. We've been called out from everybody else. He chose you. Many are called, but very few have been chosen. You take joy that Yah have chosen you. We don't have to be with the crowd. Because we understand that Hasatan is the God of this world, according to James 4 and 4. He's the God of this age. So understand this, when, when Yahushua was on earth, he called disciples, he chose them. He picked them out to be separate. Yah has chosen you, those that have been awakened to the truth. You are a light, to be a light to the world. 
You're supposed to walk in the precepts of Yah and lead everybody to the truth. You ain't supposed to hide your light because you're falling to feast days. You ain't supposed to hide your light because you don't want to worship on Sunday, Sunday any longer. We're walking in the truth. And as we walk in the truth, the light of Yah shall shine upon us. As we walk in the truth, we're not ashamed of the Basor. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Yahushua HaMashiach. We're not ashamed because we have been chosen to lead. We're not like everybody else. Hallelujah. If you believe that, come yeah. on, give y'all a big Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. 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 We're chosen. Hallelujah. It's our barometer. Thank you, Father. It's our barometer. You walk by the law. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me. The Bible says those that say they love me and they keep it not come my commandments, you are a liar. Come on, 1 John 2. 1 John 2 and 3. 1 John 2 and 7. If you love me, you say you love me and you keep not my commandments, you're a liar. You are a liar. Those that love me, he said, I will write my commandments on your heart. Jeremiah 31. I'm going to write it on your hearts. I'm going to write it on you. It ain't going to be on tablets no more. See, when he wrote it on tablets to the Israelites, it was a forced thing. It was a mandatory thing for them to do the law. But he said, in the days coming, I'm not going to make nobody keep this thing. I'm going to write it on your heart. And if you love me, guess what? You're going to follow what I say. My father here, a father, he's online. My mother's online. And as a child, many things that uh, my mother and father did was based on condition. If we had, if we grew up in the house, we had good report cards and we cleaned up stuff in the house and we did certain things, it compelled my mother and father to buy stuff for us. Because guess what? You did everything that I told you to do. So therefore, as a father, I shall reward you because you're walking out what I, what you, what I, what you know I desire from you. So therefore, that's showing the love to me. The same way, our Abba Father, our Abba, our Abba Yah, we are his children, and we show that we love him. But not, not, not by just saying, oh, I love you, Yah, I love you, Yah, I love you, Yah, but showing him. We got to show him, and that means forsaking the world. That means forsaking things that everybody else is doing, forsaking things that everyone else is walking in. Because I love Yah, and this is a strict road that we're walking in, but it's going to lead to eternal life. It's going to pay off being separate. It's going to pay off walking out the word and standing strong for Yah. He's looking for a light. He's looking for you to open your mouth and declare. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. We have to declare who we are in earth because in order for the rest of the world to wake up, in order for the rest of Israel to wake up, for the rest of the Gentiles to wake up, they need to see a light that would carry the basor, the good news, the glad tidings of Yahusha HaMashiach. We're spreading the basor, the glad tidings into the earth. You've been called, Terrence. Shalim, you've been called. Brandon, you've been called. Valerie, you've been called. Nate, you've been called. Everyone here has been called. You've been awakened for a purpose. You've been waking out of your sleep to declare, not just to say, I'm woke. I'm glad to be involved. It's a good thing to me. No, but you have a job to do. Go into the highways and compel them and let them understand who you are and who we are. To come out of the paganistic ways. Come out of celebrating Easter. Come out of celebrating Christmas and these pagan things. And be ye separate, said Yah. We have a job to do. And that's to wake up the lost sheep of Israel. Be encouraged, Mishpachah. Be encouraged. The law is our barometer. Our law is holy. The law is good. The law is spiritual. But most importantly, it shows us who we are. So we want to offend our Abba Yah. We got to have a law. We got to have a law. To understand what he wants from us, we have to have a law. We have to walk in it. Hallelujah. I'm through. I'm through. I thank Yah. Thank Yah for y'all coming on here today. I thank Yah. For y'all and be encouraged, Miss Faka. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because as we begin to wake up, 
the curse of Israel. We're going to deal with that in some coming uh, future. Future, the Bible just want to set a foundation today of the law because the law is it has a lot of misconceptions. And because we learn, a lot of us come out of Christian church and we were taught that the law was bad. Are you under the bondage of that law? But they don't understand Paul's letters, and we're going to dig into that in future weeks. Paul's letters have jacked us completely up because Paul's letters can be misleading if we don't dissect it. So we're going, so Christianity is based upon the misconception of Paul's letters and paganism. There's no way the whole theme of the Bible was a people that Yah had chosen. And these problems, these people that he chose that he loved, they had a problem. And they kept going after other gods. They kept going after other gods. And he kept trying to get them to come back to him. And the same thing has happened to this day. We're going after other gods. Christmas is based off of paganism. Easter, Ishtar. We're going to talk about all of this in, in the Shabbats, in our Shabbats. We're going to talk about things they don't talk about in the church. We're going to talk about the history. We're going to talk about Constantine. We're going to talk about Molech. We're going to talk about Marduk. We're going to talk about all these things that they're not, they're not teaching in the church. The history. A lot of times we teach word in church, but we don't teach the history. There's a historical analysis that we have to attack. We have to understand where this stuff comes from. Who are these gods? Who is Astrid? Who is uh who is ba uh, Baal? Who is uh uh Dionysus? Who is Hercules? Who is Thor? Who is Frigga? Who is uh, all these different gods that we're worshiping? We even know we're worshiping. Oh, we're gonna attack all that because the mystery of God needs to know the truth got to come out. And I'm not afraid to open up my my big mouth to let y'all know and let the world know what the truth is. The people need to know. We our people are destroyed. They're being destroyed by the lack of knowledge. And the pastors will not teach the people because of their agendas, because of money. Well, if I teach this, they're going to lose the people. Well, listen, are you called by y'all or not? Those ain't your people. Those are y'all's people. So therefore, you are called to teach the truth in season, out of season. If they want to hear it, if they don't want to hear it, we have a charge. But Jeremiah 23 talks about the prophets, the lion prophets, that's causing our people to go to air in error. We're going to talk about all that, all that, that people are going to know. Everything that the church, we're in this, in this assembly, we're coming against the dogma and the traditions of men. We're coming against these things. We're tearing down the walls of tradition. We're tearing, we're tearing down the leaven of the Pharisees. We're tearing down that doctrine that has kept our people sleep and stupid and slumbered. And that's keeping us in paganism against our Yah. We can't even, y'all don't even receive our prayers if we're not keeping the law, according to Proverbs. Hallelujah. We want to be in a position where Abba Yah will hear us. We're going to tear these things down. Hallelujah. So we're thankful. We're thankful for the Most High Yah for this awakening. We're thankful for what He's doing right now. We're thankful. A lot of people think we're crazy. You know what I mean? They ain't strange doctrine. And then, what, uh, before I go, let me say this. Let me address this. A, a lot of pastors say, because you're awakening, or you're something strange and strange doctrine. Well, understand this. If you understand Acts 18, you understand that Paul, in Acts 18, that he left from the Gentiles to go back to Jerusalem because he said he had to keep the feast. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, he was talking about the, the, the unleavened bread feast. And told them about keeping the feast. <laughs> so if Paul, who they base their doctrine off of, is keeping feasts, why are you not? Paul said, follow me as I follow Yahushua HaMashiach. So therefore, something's off here. Somebody ain't telling the truth. Somebody lying at this point. So strange doctrine. So when the apostles died and they start not keeping the feast and they, they stop not uh, keeping the Shabbats, that's when the strange doctrine came in. So Christianity, you're talking about your own self. Strange doctrine. Because the doctrine of the Bible is keeping the feast days. Because the apostles kept them. Yahushua kept them. You're not keeping them. So you're the one that Paul was talking about that you're in the strange doctrine. You're the one that he's talking about. Hmm. Amen. <laughs> we follow the Bible. So we thank God. We thank Yah. For truth and redemption, this is my um, second week 
um, of actually teaching. I will be officially um, in um, in May. I'll be officially uh, consecrated as a moray in Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, at the end of May. So we just starting now because the young lions and and, and our chat been pulling pulling on us, and so therefore we, um, we started early. So this assembly, the Truth and Redemption, Great Awakening Assemblies, we're actually connected to Dr. Kenneth Howard out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. We have other 17 other assemblies that's like us across the nation in, in the Bahamas and different areas. Um, and we're just waking up the lost sheep of Israel. You'll be able to meet him. He'll come on his Zoom here in about a month or so. And I'll, I'll introduce him to us. But again, this is not like Christianity. We don't, he doesn't take ties. We don't take ties here. We don't take ties. My understanding of tithe from the Christian church to now is totally different. I'll be teaching that differently. Ties was not money as we know it. Ties was food and was possession. Are we going to make people mad here? Oh, I'm going to make people mad. I'm going to tell the truth. Because a lot of these pastors ripping our people off and taking their money and, and abusing the scriptures and doing so, <laughs> Hasatan is a liar. We're going to tell the truth on here. Or we turn this stuff down. So officially in May, I will be consecrated. But the name, you know, of the ministry is Truth and Redemption, Great Awakening Assemblies, Columbus, Ohio. So this is where we at. This is what we're doing. When we come against the dogma of man, how many know what dogma means? What is dogma? False doctrine. Tradition, yes, traditional. Doctrines of men. Dogma. Man-made doctrine. We turn that down, man. We turn that down. We turn it down. We turn it down. Hallelujah. So next week, y'all keep me in prayer. Unfortunately, next week, we're not able to uh, have Zoom next week because uh, my singing group, most of you know, I have a singing group called Men of God's Heart. And one of our, our brothers passed away here uh, just recently on Friday. Um, Antonio Hardy, he was uh, in our group for a good three years. He passed away uh, of cancer yesterday. So we're going down there next to his funeral is next Saturday. So we're driving down next Saturday, but we'll be back in at the Saturday after that. We'll be back in full force. I believe that will be the 17th of April. We'll be back. Tell a friend about this teaching. If, if, if y'all has blessed you today and you've been blessed by the teaching, we're going to dig more in. Just want to give you an introductory, but we're going to dig more in. We're going to have really got a lot to dig in, a lot to dig in as the weeks go by until Yahoo should come and get us. The feast days, talking about the feast to understand the more deems. All these things that we were not taught in Christianity, we will be taught here. Here, we'll be getting that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My beautiful wife is there. Do you want to say something before we pray out? I just want to say, again, we're just grateful for everyone that came on the Zoom today. We're very excited about what y'all is going to do with this assembly and with each and every one of you that's here. Um, again, keep us in prayer. Keep uh, Moray Stone in prayer as he embark upon this new journey and this um, task that has been set before him. Keep each other in prayer um, as we go through the week. Um, again, um, we, we're just honored and we, we're just grateful for everyone that's here for the Mishpacha. Um, and we'll be excited to see you not next week, but the following week. So again, keep each other in prayer as we move forward and we um, go out to tear down Hasatan's kingdom. So thank you and Shabbat Shalom to all of you all. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah. Yeah. Any of the ox Amen. want to say anything? Shabbat Shalom. Uh, it's been a, a very uh, a good meeting. I appreciate uh the invite, and uh, I look forward to the uh, meetings in the future. Hallelujah. Invite, if you want to invite um, anyone to come on the teachings, the meeting, just let me know, and I'll add them into the list. They just have to register one time so we don't have to continue to keep putting their email name when they come. So if you have Ms. Faka, you have family um, that wants to come, and they're, they're awakened, and they don't have nowhere to go, and they want to sit down and be taught and and we we'll just want to assemble together um, as Yah begins to move and as he gives the increase of that, 
Um, we're looking to get a, you know, a building, rent a building, so that way we can see each other, we can assemble together in the assembly and then worship together. So this is where we're going. We're building, we're building traction right now. We're building, we're building. Uh, we have a vision, y'all has a vision for this ministry and we're a part of the vision. We wanna push the vision and make this thing grow because so many of our people are in just uh, delusion. They've been taught all type of stuff and they're lost. And, uh, and our job is to get them out by any means necessary. So we thank you, uh, Op, Terrence, T-Mac, coming on and as well. Anybody else had anything they want to interject before we close out? I would like to say something that I learned. This is Nehemiah's wife, Alyssa. Ah, hallelujah. Um, it's a deception to believe that it's possible to live without any type of law at all. We're always subject to some type of law, even if we're creating those laws in our head. So one of the things I learned is like, when we're creating rules for ourselves on how we're going to live, like maybe, maybe, sorry, our son is, is wanting to jump in. Maybe you're supposed to be best friends for life with the people you grew up with, or you can only accept a gift if somebody's giving you a gift. We're always living under some type of rule or some type of law. And that's why you can't serve two masters because no, no matter where you're dwelling, whether it's in your heart, in your mind, in another kingdom, in a church, in another religion, there's always going to be structure and law that you're submitting to regardless, yes. because that's how we're created. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. That's that's powerful. That was great. That was great. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody else want to interject? Uh, hey, Mr. Stone. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut off. Oh, go sorry. ahead. My, my, my apologies. Oh, no, 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 no. You go, you go. I'm sorry. Uh, par powerful teaching, Moray. Very powerful teaching. Uh, I, I love the way you brought the word out. And uh, I was just wondering, uh, are you going to have any more uh, teachings uh, or prayer uh, sessions throughout the week? We will, as, as things grow and as the, the assembly start to grow, and we start to understand who's going to be a part and everything, we're going to progress to that for sure. We're going to progress to that. Definitely, um, op chat. Definitely. Once everything gets settled in and we start clearing and maneuvering the way we're supposed to maneuver and know what's what, yes, we sure will. We sure will. Okay, okay. Two down. Yes, sir. You're on mute. Hello? Can you hear us? Hi, me. Oh, hey, yes, sir. Uh, quick question, quick question. Yes, sir. Okay, hey, sorry, sorry. Um, no, no, I, I was gonna thank you for, for bringing out um, Romans 3.20, because I totally, um, I was looking at it, uh, well, I think I misread it, but I'm glad that you, you did bring that out, because like you said, overall, it's for the law, but you're right. How you were saying before, you know, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh be justified in his sight. You're right. When you kind of first, when you read it, it does seem like it's for for the law. But then when you kind of look at it again, it's like, well, no, nah, technically they're saying, you know, I guess it's saying that. I mean, when I read it a second time, it's kind of saying. You know, by I guess the things that we do by the law, that nobody is justified in his sight. So I can kind of see, I can kind of see where if you read that a second time, it's like, okay, maybe that's, that's not for the law. But of course, the second part kind of brings it back together. But if you, if you scroll down to Romans 3.30, mm -hmm. or, or no, I'm sorry, 3.31, which kind of justified everything you were saying, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yay, we established the law. So it's like, okay. It's, that's, uh, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, I, that's excellent that you brought that out. Um, a lot of times Christianity, they, we make doctrines off of scriptures. The, the most right. dangerous things that we can do and that we have been taught in Christianity is sound biting, um, um, isolating the scriptures or eisegesis in the scriptures. When you, right. read, when you read the word, you, there's a pretext and there's a post text. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand a lot of times when people read Paul's letters, they take one verse and they run with that and they make a doctrine out of that. But you have to read, a lot of times you have to read the pretext and you have to read the post text. And sometimes you got to read the chapter before to understand what Paul is saying. And we're going to dive into all that as the weeks go further. We're going to dive into Paul to, uh, and we're going to dissect that because a lot of our, our people, they have been messed up because of Paul. 
or, or the interpretation of Paul. And, and a lot of times the doctrine that we've been taught to go along with Paul's letters is, in, is inconsistent to what he's really saying. So now we got Paul out here looking naked. Paul looking crazy. Now I'm sure if Paul was alive, he would sit here, he would come into our time like, man, that's not what I said. Y'all got me, man, y'all got me all messed up. That's not what I was talking <laughs> oh, about. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, we didn't remix him, man. Um, so <laughs> right. so like uh, we, ice, we ice at Jesus in two. Exegesis means to lead out and draw out. But when you start soundproofing and, and you focus on one scripture in the context, that's called eisegesis. You're reading into the text and that makes it dangerous because now you're forming your own doctrine out of that. Mm. So that so that scripture that you just said in Romans 3 and 31, Jaime, yeah. read that again. Yep. So it says, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? God, um, Yah forbid, yea. We established the law. So, yeah, so that right there is basically saying, yeah, so do we, do we, I mean, obviously to make void means to cancel. So, so, so do we faith, cancel the law through faith? So oh, nah. Yeah, so yeah. our faith in the Mashiach, yeah. our faith in the Mashiach, Yahusha HaMashiach, mm -hmm. uh, it does not cancel out. You know, even, mm -hmm. you know, we uphold the law. Faith, right. Because we have faith in him doesn't do away with the law. You got to have both. That's right. Just because you that's have right. faith in him, that's great. Does the it's law like, can can the law save you? Can the law save us? Um, well, if we follow the law, well, let's be honest, the law is not what saves us, it's it's, it's the most high, but following the law, it, you can't have one without the other. Right. For example, yeah, yeah, like my peanut butter and jelly lovers, right? You can't have peanut butter without the jelly, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah, you mash it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need both. So yes, yeah, we need both. You need both. Exactly. The law can't save us. The law, the law, the law job was to point us to the Mashiach. That's the law's job to point us to him. Right. Our flesh was too, due to the weakness of our flesh. The law could not save us. There's no, there was no salvation in the law for us. That's why we had to have the Mashiach. That's why Paul said in Philippians that everything I was a master of the law. I was a master teacher. I Man, I was a champion of the law. But I cut those things as done in the revelation of the of, of the Mashiach, the revelation of him. I cut those things as done. Then he say, oh, because of that, the Mashiach, I'm done with the law. That would contradict everything he said in Romans. Right, that's right. That's right. So he said, no. Right, we establish the law. We establish the law. We uphold it. Again, that's our barometer. Romans 2 and 13, not just the hearers, but the doers of the law shall be justified. That chapter 2, if you read chapter 2 of Romans in context, you will understand that he was talking to the Gentiles and he was talking to the Romans. Excuse me, the Gentiles and the, and the Hebrews. And so he was telling them, like, listen, there's no, there's no respect to person with y'all. Because both of y'all, both of us, you ready? you're a Gentile, Already you a Jew, we both got to stand before Yah. So therefore, he's going to judge us. The only thing that would justify us is the faith in the Mashiach and the keeper and the doer of the law. That's what he was telling to them. So a lot of times mm -hmm. we use, there's no Greek, no Gentile, no Greek. That's not what he was saying. That's not what they were saying. He was saying that we all going to be judged. But the only thing that's going to justify us, whether you be a Gentile, Greek, whether you be a Hebrew, the only thing that's going to justify you is doing the law and keeping him in faith in the Mashiach. Hey, Asan. Yes, sir. I wanted to uh, add this to what you were saying as far as like, you know, like, can we be saved by the law only or whatever? And you were saying like, like, basically got to have both. It reminded me of the rich young ruler and how he said, you know, I kept all these things, basically. You know, he told him like, you know, go sell all your stuff and then come follow me. Wow. See what wow. I'm saying? It's wow. like you have to have both because he's the, the he's the fulfillment. He's the icing on the cake. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. Absolutely. You got uh, mo to most and, mo and most people forget that Paul, um, and good stuff, Brandon, um, and I'm sorry to uh, interject, but see, most people forget that Paul, although, you know, you know, he claimed, um, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, yeah, he was Roman. He was Roman. Paul was actually a Jew. He was Jewish, which is why he kept the laws, the customs. He was actually a Jew. He was born in, in Rome, but he was a Jewish um, um, dissension basically. Absolutely, Paul. Paul tells us. Paul tells us who he is in in Romans, 
11. He said, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. That's who he tells who we are. So yes, he was a Hebrew, but he also had uh, his citizenship with Greeks as well. So this is why they couldn't do certain things to Paul because, you know, when they was getting ready to, to slap him or beat him, he let them know, like, yo, I'm, I'm a Roman citizen as well. So they couldn't do what they wanted to do with him. So Paul was slick with it. <laughs> Definitely was sick, slick with it. Any more? Anybody else want to um, interject? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you all again. Um, again, not next week, but April the, um, I think it's April the 17th. We'll be convened again. And I, I think we're going to break down the uh, covenants. How many how many covenants are there? How many covenants does y'all have? Well, let me ask another question: the, is, is y'all in covenant with with, with uh, religion? Is he in covenant with with Baptists and uh, Methodists and? Is nah, he he's in covenant with the people. Come on, come on. Uh, Super Ock, come on, come on. He's a covenant with people. So in order to understand the law, then we have to understand the covenants as well. We have to understand. So we're going to be breaking down. We're going to be diving into covenants on the 17th. We're going to break down the covenants and how they apply till this day. Okay. All right. How many are there? How many are there? Well, you have the Edenic covenant. You have the uh, Noahic, no Noahic covenant. You have the uh, Abrahamic covenant. Uh, you have the uh, Mosaic Covenant, you have the Davidic Covenant, and we have the what we know or what we call the New Covenant, all, but it's really the repaired and renewed covenant. So we're going to touch on all those covenants. We're going to break them down and how they inter intertwine with the law. We're going to equip you here. You're going to you don't you're going to know how to defend this law and this and this in our. Um, uh, Sabbath teachings, you want to know how to defend when you talk to someone outside of, uh, you know, what you believe or, or Christianity, a lot of Christians, you're going to be able to have the conversation with them and know what you're talking about to dissect what they're saying with the truth. So this is a quick, we're equipping it. What is a, uh, what second Peter said, give every man an answer for the hope that's inside of you. What did you say? We, we're going to defend. We're going to, we're going to defend what we know, what we understand to give the truth. How can you give the truth to somebody you don't know what you're talking about? So we're going to do that, Jack. My daughter, Jack, you had a, you had your hand up. Hey, hey, uh, Stone, this is Matt. Uh, I just wanted to know about okay. you speaking about the covenants. I was wondering which covenant are are we under? If you could touch on that, you want to come back next week, young man. You you all in my lesson now. I got <laughs> this going to be to be continued for you. <laughs> you better okay. come back on the seventeenth, young man, and get that. Because right. if I cause I, once I start going, I, I we're gonna be here for the last next hour and a half. <laughs> but I'm gonna give you a hint. Um, it's look up repaired and renewed covenant, and I'm gonna give you that tip. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> All right, praise y'all, praise y'all. Anyone else want to interject? Uh, yes, more Ray Stone. Yes, sir. I appreciate this lesson this morning uh, because being woke only around about three or four months, I need all this information because I realize that we have a responsibility not just to be woke, but to wake others up also. And in order to wake them up, we need the information that you have talked this morning and more information. Praise y'all. Praise y'all. Hey, son, you're going to make us want to move back to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Praise y'all. <laughs> <ya>. Praise y'all. <ya. laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Toda. Toda Raba. Hallelujah. What, what does Toda Raba mean? Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. All right, Everyone. all right. We're gonna be throwing Hebrew words out here, out there. So we're gonna be learning Hebrew words. What does what does malak mean? What is a malak? Brother, uh, the walk king. M M A L A K malak. Oh M king. No. M A L A K. Walk out. He says angel. A messenger. Come on, come on. So who said messenger? Who's the angel? Mackenzie said angel. Correct, correct, cor correct, angel. 
What does Emma mean? What is Emma? A I M M A. Mother. All right. All right. All right. All right. We moving. We gonna make traction. We gonna be learning the Hebrew language. We are gonna be learning these things. Um, Ernestine Dewberry. All I know is, so you better give me a Hebrew dictionary. Yeah. Everything that I'm learning. <laughs> This is truly new. It's a lot of things that was awakening me before I got with you, but nobody, I could never get with nobody because everybody looking at me like I was crazy. I kept saying, well, wait a minute, if we reading this word right, and y'all keep saying the Sabbath, and y'all keep saying we supposed to be in church on Sunday, it just wasn't hitting with my spirit right. Mm. So nobody, I never, you know, nobody never came across or said anything or, you know, because I was raised in a tradition. Mm. You know, being there on Sunday. So that's mm. what I was rolling with for a long time. This has been years. And I kept questioning that. And everybody keep pushing it to the side, you know? Mm. We gonna so I'm learning a lot. A lot I don't know. But I want, I'm wanting to learn. But you're a good, you're an excellent teacher. Now, coming from where we came from, to now, I'm just smiling at you, Stone. Wow. Because wow. <laughs> you... You you doing some things and I appreciate you. I appreciate being on here and I appreciate learning. So yeah, you're gonna have to give me a whole lot of information here. It's a oh, whole yeah. lot of teaching. Listen, I'm ready to I'm giving in everything that was given to me, I'm willing to give it out and more because I have a passion for our people to to have truth. I'm a truth seeker. I'm a truth yes. seeker. And um my mother and father, they raised me and my siblings to never follow trends or follow crowds. And we always, uh, when we understood what truth was, then he taught us, my mother and father taught us to walk the truth out. And I thank God for that. And that's where I am. I never, I've never been caught up with pleasing men. That ain't never been me. I'm not a, I'm right. not a man pleaser, but I'm looking to, uh, to obey Yah. And that's all my desire is to obey him, to seek his approval and to be everything that he wants to be. And that causes, if that causes me to be an outcast and, and that's, that's okay, because guess what? I'm in good company. Because Yahusha, he was an outcast. Yeah. <laughs> he was rejected right. by men. So, hey, long as uh -huh. I'm in that com company with that, I'm good with it. And a great is our reward. Because, again, it's the broad way. And I ask the question all the time. Well, I always thought this growing up, um, Sister Dewberry. And, you know, I never said nothing because when you question as a child, you start questioning things in, in, in uh, church. I call it, oh. you might get smacked in your mouth. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. So you know, you say something, they tell me what you talking about. Then you gotta be quiet. Right. Quiet. I said, never mind, never mind. That's yeah, right. you, yeah, you want you you weren't questioning Valerie Stone. You weren't questioning Oscar J Stone Jr. in that house. They, and you ask them a question, they tell you because I said so. That's why. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, That's how I was raised. So you get you get some kind of object coming your way. You don't know right, where it's going to be. Right, exactly. So therefore, but that's the same mindset we have in Christianity. When you talk to pastors, they give you the same type of response. If you ask a question, then you 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 didn't come to devil in hell from hell in the church now because you want yeah. to know ask questions. And so, but I always wanted to know, like, um, if if the broad way leads to destruction, and the straight and narrow path leads to eternal life, there isn't all these denominations the broad way. I always wanted. <laughs> I always want to know that, like all these denominations that come from man, that's like the Broadway, Christianity, the Broadway. So I, I never, yeah. you know, if I said that, I definitely would have got smacked in the mouth for that. But I thought it all mm -hmm. my, I thought all my life. But it makes sense now. Forty-four thousand denominations and religions. We have one Bible, and none of us really agree on that. We have forty-four thousand denominations of Christianity. Right. That's crazy. And that's we all got crazy. different thoughts, different doctrines, grace. Grace alone, mm -hmm. uh, faith alone, Jesus only. You know, all these different things are, are right, right. These uh, right. Trin Trinity doctrine, Baptist Sunday, all these different things come from Babylon. And we're gonna get into that we to come. We're gonna talk about Nimrod and Semiratus, and we're gonna talk about Tammuz, Sun God reborn. We're gonna talk about these things. You know what I mean? The sun gods, where they come from, where does Sunday worship come from? Bell worship, bells above, and all these different things. We're gonna talk about all of that. We're going to be good. Equipped. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Thank we're you. doing all that in here. All that. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so anyone have, do you want to inject, interject anything else? I don't want to keep holding y'all on. One thing about me, I don't, I'm a, uh, I like to hit in, hit it and quit it, as they say. I'm not a long-winded Moray, not yet. But being around the Great <laughs> Awakening, being around the Great Awakening, Dr. Howard, Dr. Kim Howard, and some of the Morways, I, I'm sure that the anointing is going to jump on me after a while. So y'all, for now, enjoy the time that I'm not long-winded yet. 
<laughs> well, when you have a good teaching, you just keep asking. You know, you be looking at the time later on. But when you got, you know when it's good. You know when it's good, and you know when you like. Okay, I'm gone. You know? Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Um, I mm-hmm. went to Hebrew Academy, so a lot of a lot of the um stuff that I learned in the academy, Hebrew Academy, I will be sharing a lot of the slides and stuff that I've learned. I went to school for this. Uh, a lot of this stuff I took. Uh, Defending the law courses in um, the Hebrew Academy. I took uh, Christian uh, church uh, history, church with the church fathers one on one. I took that, and I I took uh, 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 Hebrew apologetics. I took that. I took the feast day courses. So everything I learned was not for me just to be knowledgeable, but everything I learned was to spread it to everybody else. So uh, I took those courses. I took those classes. I went through all that. And I have all the notes and I have all the slides and everything. So guess what's going to happen now? You're going to get everything I got. Everything. Hallelujah. Slides, everything uh, everything I got. The Mishra Kai Young family, you're going to get it too. So that's the whole purpose. Ain't no purpose to me being puffed up and having knowledge for what? Now that ain't what I'm mm-hmm. looking for. I want to help somebody be awakened in Come your on, walk. Man. To be strengthened. So that's what this is about. That's what this is about. Um, anybody else want to inject anything before we go? Hallelujah. Thank you for my, my lovely daughter. She's already in Louisiana. I love you, baby girl, and, and her, her, her friend. Uh, and my son, I call him my son already. Uh, it, it's a blessing. I'm going to share this, and then we're going to go. It's a blessing. You know, when you're a father and um, you have daughters, and I have one, one daughter, uh, you're very protective of that daughter. You know, you're very mm-hmm. protective, and I've been protective for her since she was a little girl. Uh, that's, my, that's daddy's girl right there. But it's a blessing yeah. when she uh, she finds a, a, a boyfriend. As a father, you, you're skeptical. You, you know, you're looking at them, you're sizing them up, and you want to be threatening to them. You know, let them know I don't play with my daughter. But I think, um, thank God for the boyfriend that she has. This man understands the truth. He's he's, he's walking out there, keeping the uh, the Levitical uh, 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 dietary laws. They're walking out the dietary laws and, and keeping the Shabbats. Um, learning and he's being an example, man. He has a hunger uh, for the truth. And that was him just came on and asked about the covenants. So I thank God for that. The Bible says in Deut- Deuteronomy 30 and 6 that in the land of our captivities, we should remember ourselves as we're in America right now. We didn't ask to come here. We've been captured and took it here, our ancestors. So we're in the land of our captivity. But the Bible says we shall waken up in our land of our captivities and we should come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yah. And not only this, but our children should come back. So my daughter, this awakening, you know, she's, she's on it 100%. My baby boy, he's on here. Emmanuel, he's 10 years old. And, and not only that, he has his teaching. He does his own little teaching at 2 o'clock for his yeah. friends. Uh, that he does. He has a ministry called what's it called? Truth Roblox Ministries. And so he has a little uh, animated uh, uh, church that he has and my, my mother attends it. My dad attends it. My <laughs> wife attends it. I, I got to be a faithful member. I've been missing and hitting and missing. I haven't been faithful like I suppose to, to, <laughs> to his ministry. But <laughs> but this this thing is uh, it's hitting. This is prophetic. We're, this is awakening right now. This is a prophetic awakening right now all over the globe. We're waking up all over the place. To the truth of Yah, and we're, we're, we're repenting. We're teshuvan. That word teshuvan, Ernest Dewberry, it means to repent and come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Repenting is not just saying, I'm sorry, sorry over again. I didn't commit a sin with this girl on Saturday night, and I go to church on Sunday morning. The next week, I didn't commit a sin with her again, over and over again. I'm sorry, Yah. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Nah, teshuvan is coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments. That's coming back to his way, his rule, and what he ordered for us. So praise Yah. This is what we're in right now. And we're in the season of Teshuvah. We're in the season of Teshuvah. So we thank Yah for that. So uh, before I keep talking, we want to ask um, my father, I'm going to ask you to close us out today in prayer. Can you do that for us? Mr. God, we're going to ask everyone to open up their mics and just give Yah the praise. Thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you because in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there's pleasures evermore. We thank you for this young man that you have made to be a moray even before the consecration 
has taken place. We thank you for the word that has come from his lips that has excited us to go further in you. We pray that you expand the ranks. Oh, that we become the spiritual alarm clocks in the lives of the people that surround us, that they too will take part in this, to embrace this Torah uh, in a very special way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And remember the bereaved family of uh, uh, Antonio Hardy, mm, we yes, pray that you're comfort. Yes. We pray that you're encouraged. Yes. We pray that you're blessed. Be with them. In the, in the name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, we praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. You're so worthy. You're so yes, worthy. Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Most High. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mishpacha, I love y'all until April the 17th. I love y'all and thank you for coming on. Please invite those that are awakened or those that you sense are awakening or those that want to be awakened. Bring them on. Send, send me an email or send me a text so I can put them on here. And so that they can come on and be a part of everything that we're doing. Hallelujah. Love y'all. Hallelujah. We'll y'all Love April the 17th. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.